This is Fred O'Donnell. He may appear as an average man, but he's been through more than what a normal man can say. He is my granddad, and this is his story. Every year, my granddad travels from Bradford, England to Cork in Ireland to visit the grave of a woman he never knew. Amongst the rain and the cold flowers lies Julia O'Donnell, his mother. In early 20th century Ireland, the Catholic Church was at the forefront of power. Women and children who broke the sacred covenant of the Church were subjected to horrors a modern man can only imagine. Fiona Ward, a private researcher part of the Justice for Magdalene campaign, came into contact with one of the members of my family with information regarding the O'Donnell heritage. A researcher in Dublin came across an O'Donnell death in Cork of this Church of Ireland lady but the name was different and we subsequently discovered that the death of this lady in Cork, this Frances O'Donnell, was in fact the one and same Julia, Fred's mum. My mother went to uh, a Madeleine home which is for unmarried mothers. There were no single mothers, you know, illegitimacy was a major frowned upon and these women that had given birth would have been just totally outcast by society, by their families. Fallen women were termed in the 18th century as prostitutes only. But by the early 20th century, the concept included seduced women and unmarried mothers. The treatment of women back then was desperate too. But then we all say back then, the last one closed in 1996. That's less than 20 years ago. My granddad's mother was 23 when she was sent to the laundries by her mother. The women were mistreated and physically abused by the nuns. One personal recollection of an incident showed the nuns to give abuse for the breaking of a single cup. Ladies should never ever have been put in places like that at all. The brutality that went on in there it's just horrendous. She stopped in the home until she was 82 when she died. It's just like a life sentence going in them places. In the grave where she is, there's five other people buried in the same grave. In them days, they put the, the Madeline people, people in a separate part of the graveyard. And that's, uh, well, that's supposed to be the way it was. The cruelty of the church continued. From across Julia's grave, the bodies of the Magdalene laundry nuns lay buried, staring down on their victims, even in death. They were all told to keep their mouth shut. If you didn't keep your mouth shut, you'd get more punishment than what you got. You hear so many stories, you read the books, but nobody will ever, ever, ever know the real story of what went on in the Magdalene laundries. How did you feel when you went to visit your mum's grave for the first time? Oh, that I was, I was very down and out because uh, it was the first time that I'd ever seen it and uh, it really knocked me for six, like, you know, just something that uh, I never knew that I'd, that, that I'd see in, in, in my lifetime, like, you know, cause with all the research that was going on, we didn't know anything about it. So I was really pleased to see it in the end. To find something belonging to somebody that you've never seen is quite emotional. I'm glad we found it now. If you would have met your mum, do you know what you would have said to her? Well, <laughs> well, after after all them years, it probably would be, why did she you know? Why did she leave us? And she might have told me. Maybe she mightn't. I would have liked to see her. I mean, I have a photograph over there, on the on the on the window. I would never, you know, if she had been alive, if 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 I had seen her when she was alive, I would have been. Very, very thankful, you know. My granddad was born in 1937, out of wedlock, in a nursing home. Thus began the existence of Fred O'Donnell, 
and the future suffering of his early life. The way it started out was uh, I was born in, in a Bethany home in Dublin. My grandmother reared me for a while and then uh, after that uh, she put me in a home. Fathers were never included in the identity of the child as many of the mothers had been prostitutes, abandoned or raped. On October the 24th, 1938, at the tender age of 15 months, Fred was abandoned by his grandmother outside Eccles Street Orphanage, vulnerable in the bitter cold. Five years of the orphanage had passed until my granddad was finally fostered into care. As an orphan, Fred had never known the feeling of parental love. This should have been the beginning of his happiness. However, due to the inability to care for him, his foster mother returned him to the orphanage. At the age of eight, my granddad was fostered for the second time, where he was neglected and starved. Because of intense hunger, Fred resorted to begging. When my daughter got the paperwork, she said to me, Dad, you're a right little one. I said, why? What's the problem? She said, you were a little beggar, weren't you? And I said, for what? Begging for what? She said, well, according to the paperwork that we've got from, from the researchers and that, that you were found on the streets of Dublin begging. I was lucky to be picked off, off the street by the police. You know, you say to yourself, well, that was me in them days. You get a bit down and out and, you know, bring back memories to you. It's, it's sad, like, you know, well, when you, when you see someone else, the same as I, I, I watched the young lad get the sentence. For begging in the street, I sentence you to eight years in Artane Industrial School. Next. I was all right until when he said you know, I was going to sentence you, you know, that it brought, well, I don't ever remember it being sentenced, but, you know, when I was a child, I, I've, I've never remembered that. It brings back, you know, flashbacks to you, that, you know, the way it worked out. Looking at the uh, young lad that was take, taking my part, like, you know, it, it affects you, like, you know, you can, when you, when you think of what you've gone through, something that's, that's in my brain, in my mind for the rest of my life, I would never tell. Just that I went there, done what I had to do. It, it was hard, actually. I keep thinking of it, like, you know, I wouldn't want to go through it again. My granddad's innocence was shattered. The hardest part, really, in them schools, well, well, where I was, was the summertime. Because in the summertime, a lot of the parents come and take their children out for the, the for, you know, for the summer holidays. But them, them that have no parents at all are still left in the school. The pain of being an orphan never left him. It's been a lot on the, been the, on the television in, in Ireland and the wireless isn't there, about uh, you know, the abuse he got. The abuse from the Christian brothers were amongst the greatest of human atrocities. So you had to be on your best behaviour, otherwise you would have you know, got what was coming to you. That's something I would never tell anyone what happened to me in there. Never. God, I've seen it. I've seen it with other children. That will stay with me for the rest of my days. Once you're 16, that's your leave. It's very good to be out of it. Breaking free from his tormented past, my granddad found love and his faith in humanity was restored. 1963, uh, settled here in Bradford and got married. I'd known her for a while, but uh, she was Irish herself, like, you know, she comes from Mount Malik and he got down a leash, like, you know. So we were quite happy. This year I would have been 55 married. Years married this year if I had, it, if I had been alive. I, en 
guy in your life. You might as well, because there's nothing else, you know. You're on your own, you have to make the best of it. Which is, I know some people find it hard living on their own. Well, I did after, after the wife died. I found it for a while, but I had to carry on. Three years ago, Fred discovered the whereabouts of his mother's home and his orphanage. I'd never seen the house in, in, in my lifetime. That's the first time I'd ever seen it. But I would prefer if someone had been there, you know, so that I could have a talk with someone. How did you feel when you went back to the orphanage? Yeah, I felt uh, a bit lonely and that, like, you know, it's uh, something that I haven't seen for years and years. Because I left there in 1953 and I hadn't been back, you know, after that. So it's nice to see it again after all the years. Even after years of building a new life, my granddad remains curious about his heritage. And his perseverance paid off as some new interesting information came to light. Through the archives, we discovered that there was, Julia had given birth to another son. This Jimmy, James O'Donnell, who we still haven't been able to track down or trace. It, was, it surprised me because research that we were doing, I didn't think I'd ever find out anything, you know, because uh, I always thought I was on, on, on my own. We don't know how the two brothers ended up in two separate homes. But now there's a problem at the moment with him because they say that they have no records of him being in Ireland, in this home. And I can't understand that because we've got photographs of him being there when he was small, different ages. But there's, they say now that there's no records of him being there. There's someone covering up somewhere, we don't know what's going on. There's a picture of Fred's brother, Jimmy, with Fred's mum, Julia, in a newspaper article that was taken in, I'd be guessing, sometime in the 1980s. The headline on the article was, no, we don't have the article, we only have the photographs, that um, they had been reunited after 33 years. That was sent by the convent to Fred, but they won't release even his address or where he was then. If we had the address from where he was then, we possibly would be able to find where he is today, even if he had moved but they won't even release that much to us. How he got to know where the mother was, you know, and after 33 years, that's the way things are working out. We don't know any more now than that. So we're trying to still trace him, but we, we, I don't think we'll ever find him. It's either it's up to him whether he wants to try and well, he might know about me, you see, same as I didn't know about him until we got the photographs of him when he was small and when he was in the home and stuff like that. We don't really know about him. The final thing that, that would get me, you know, would make me very happy if I could meet him, you know, whether I will or not, I don't know. The year before last, did we discover that there was another older brother? The eldest brother, there was three of us, and I'm the baby. I'm 77. The middle brother 79, and the eldest brother was 81. He died in 2000, which we've only found out recently. The final closure would be if we ever, ever manage to find his brothers before yeah. anything happens to my dad. I think that, at the moment, is all he's living for, to see his brothers. But when then, then when you do find out that you really have someone belong to you, it cheers you up and then you can say, oh, well, I know of someone there, you know, I can go see him or they can come see me. The state knows where the four of them were. And here's Fred trying to find his brothers and his mum. And the state won't say to him, here you are, Fred. You know, he had to come and find lay people to track down his mum and trace where she was and where her life was. And we've tried to put the pieces together as best we could. And unfortunately, it ended up with taking Fred to a cemetery two years ago where he walked in and saw his mother's headstone and that was the first contact he'd had with his mum since shortly after he was born. That's the society where we are in 2015 where you have a man who has to walk into a graveyard 
because the state won't tell him where his mum was. Won't tell him where his brother is. Won't tell him where his second brother is. And here we are. If we could get to know more about him, we'd, that would crown it. I would finish the story. I, I would let it go, you know. I'd say, well, I've done what I had to do. I found him in the story. But I won't give up on it. Like, If you were to meet him, do you know what you would say to him? Oh, no, that's a long, that's a big, that's the big question after 77 years. What do you have? Well, I'd, I'd probably ask him what was said between him and the mother. I'd, I'd, I'd say that would be the first thing I'd, I would really say to him because first time when we got after him meeting her, you know, because it'd be, I know it's a hard thing, but that's, I think that'd be the first thing I'd say to him, or I'd say, well, as everyone says, where have you been all this time? <laughs> you know, where have you been all my life? Oh, no, I've been trying to trace you, and well, we, we, we got nowhere, and how did you get to know where the mother was, and what was said, and what, and why did you put that in the paper that you met her after 33, 33 years? See, that, that's, a, that's a mystery, is that one? A big mystery, is that? How he got to know. I'm quite happy. I've no, I've no regrets, like, you know, although I've had it hard. Hope lives on in Fred's heart that he will find his brother someday. For now, my grandma's life is an example to everyone of remaining strong in times of hardship and smiling in the face of a painful past.